So uh, this story begins with a vision for a place to expand one's mind through the arts. And such an idea takes many hands to be realized. So I'll be discussing some of those key figures and moments over the past 100 years with you during the next 400 seconds. So what you see here is Hollyhock Olive Hill that was a property purchased by Aline Barnstall in 1919. Barnstall was many things beyond an oil heiress. She was a philanthropist, an activist, a theatrical producer, and a single mother. She set out to fulfill her plans for a thriving theater arts center by hiring fellow spirited personality and artistic genius, Frank Lloyd Wright. The two started developing plans for the 36 acre site. The main focus of the property was of course the theater, but the complex would include so much more a movie cinema, artist apartments, guest houses, and a row of retail storefronts and studios along Hollywood Boulevard. But all that was realized by 1921 were three domestic structures. As you see here, Hollyhock House, Residence A and Residence B. Ultimately, Barnstall fired Wright and the arts community she sought to create was put on hold. Though the house no longer suited her needs, she wrote in a letter to Wright, I don't want a thing of beauty destroyed before it has had its influence and began the process of gifting part of the property to the city of Los Angeles, which they accepted in 1927. The California Arts Club leased the house for its headquarters. During their residency, the club hosted a myriad of arts programming from exhibition to music and dance performances to lots of lectures. Schindler, Lloyd Wright and Neutra were all members. After the art club and the Olive Hill Foundation vacated Hollyhock House, what was to come of Olive Hill? How was the city to utilize this space to fulfill Barnstall's wishes? They, that came in an ally and kindred spirit of Kenneth Ross, who became the Municipal Arts Director in 1949. Ross saw the potential in Barnstall Park and the need to establish cultural centers. In 1953, he traveled to New York to see Wright's retrospective, 60 Years of Living Architecture, and secured Los Angeles to host the exhibit the following year, a new beginning for creating the arts complex Barnstall had so desired. Though Wright did prepare a design for the temporary exhibition hall, Ross, the one smoking in this photograph, utilized pro bono design services, but the design followed Wright's general form. The city has to save money where it can. The exhibition hall ran parallel to the original animal pens and a large lecture room encompassed the auto court. So here are um, some photos coming up of the opening reception in 1954. On the bottom uh, left is Wright with his granddaughter, Ann Baxter. And I included one of my favorite photographs from the archive. Wright is speaking with fellow architect, Paul Revere Williams, an esteemed member of the Municipal Arts Commission. And, but uh, don't try to recreate this photo on your next visit to Hollyhock House. Here are a few images of Wright's retrospective. Shout out to the Guggenheim model in the back. Not only was it a popular show, but it reinforced Wright's connection to Olive Hill. The show also validated Ross's ambition of, for the department. The temporary exhibition hall was named the Municipal Art Gallery and continued programming with crowd-pleasing shows, including the highly attended All City Arts Festivals, traveling exhibitions, and retrospective of Los Angeles-based artists, one of which is a favorite of mine, and you might recognize her work from the 1985 Love Stamp series, Sister Mary Carita Kent, the first woman to have a solo show at the gallery. Now, you can't have a thriving arts complex without some art classes. Since the early days of the park, classes have been held on the property, but Ross worked um, to expand these offerings with the assistance of the Junior League. The Junior Arts Center opened in 1967. The center's classes continue to be in high demand and it's often how locals are, locals are first introduced to the park. Remember that exhibition pavilion I just talked about and how it was meant to be temporary? Well, sometimes that means 15 years. With Ross's unwavering determination, Los Angeles finally had a permanent municipal gallery and a theater that opened in 1971, which you see here. Along with talented curators, the gallery facilitates a space for LA artists to access a platform to show their work. Some of those artists have continued um, on to become nationally and internationally recognized from John Baldessari, Matsumutsi Katsumitsu, Barbara Kruger, Sandy Rodriguez, Ed Rusha, Ed Rusha and Charles White, to name a few. Seen here is Edmund Teske, uh, a Los Angeles-based photographer and friend of Wright and Barnstall. So now the park has a permanent gallery, a theater, and a junior arts center. What could be missing? Well, a historic house museum. However, it needed some work after some alterations. So in 1974, the city contracted Lloyd Wright to oversee the house's restoration. 
which opened to the public two years later, preserving an integral element in the story of Olive Hill, Barnstall, and Wright's legacy. And what you see here is some of Hollyhock's public programs that have fostered engagement with the site, um, including some lectures, fundraisers, anniversary celebrations, and a croquet event, which I might not advise today, but also a mystical night at Hollyhock House. Clearly, we all missed out. Over the years, the museum has opened and closed for much needed structural repairs and restoring the home to its period of significance. The preservation efforts deepen our understanding of the site and often provoke more questions. With the most recent restoration completed in 2015 is where I started my journey with Hollyhock House. First, as Marta said before, <laughs> maybe a local peering in through the windows, then as a docent and now a staff member. I've created so many fond memories with fellow docents, colleagues, friends, and visitors, and I really look forward to creating more in the future. Um, that's, that's some of these are my favorite photos <laughs> from the past six years. So through hard work of many, our beloved Hollyhock House is now a UNESCO, is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. What a stressful process and exhilarating moment to witness and celebrate. A vital step to secure arts, culture, and rights legacy for us all. It validated the influence of Wright and Hollyhock House, which Barnstall had the foresight to preserve. From Barnstall and Wright to apprentices, Kenneth Ross, curators, art teachers, artists, docents, staff, the city, and the public, we were all, we're all benefiting now from their efforts in countless ways. Finding a place to pause, reflect, learn, and act is ever so important during these challenging times, and I hope you all will visit Hollyhock House and the fellow arts centers to enjoy our programs in the future. Thank you. Bravo! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.